everybody. Um, Merry Christmas to everybody on the VC. And a special mention to Ben Costello, who um, yesterday put up his um, his first two videos on the uh, VC community. Uh, ben will be familiar to many of you, uh, for you know he communicates with quite a few people on the VC. Uh, but up till now, we haven't actually managed to put up any videos. But uh, he put up uh, two extremely interesting um, vinyl updates yesterday. So um, I advise everybody to check them out. And um, also, uh, may I mention uh, a VLCT from Ben himself. Um, he uh, gave me two um, records recently. Um, Show you actually there now, along with um, all, along with um, all the other stuff I've picked up recently. So, first of um, Ben's um, uh, uh, records was uh, is this um, this is uh, Bowie and um, Scary Monsters, uh, a record which I've been looking to plug my the gap in my Bowie collection uh, for for quite a while. Um, now it's. It is probably the last of his, you know, great run of um, 70s albums, you know, even though it came out in 1980, it's, um, you know, it's part of that kind of unbroken line from about Monkey Dory uh, up to um, up to this, basically, of, uh, of, you know, just great records, which he released during this time. Uh, this, um, this is a 1983 press, no, it's a reissue. And um, in extremely nice condition indeed. Comes with the inner lyric sheet, uh, and it, it is. I needn't tell you all that is. Is an absolutely fantastic record. Um, uh, ashes to ashes. Um, uh, the title track, um, up the hill backwards. So. Yeah, so thanks very much for that, uh, Ben, and um, that's not all he gave me. Um, another group who I have something of a soft spot for are Cabaret Voltaire. Um, uh, seminal um, group from Sheffield. Um, they were kind of instrumental in the early industrial movement. Now this particular 12 inch uh, it's from their kind of latter mid period where they kind of became a bit more um, they went down a kind of more dance oriented uh, kind of electronic um, poppy kind of a kind of a uh, approach so um, this is a double 12 inch uh, the drain train uh, now this is a US release on um, uh, Caroline Records and myself and Ben were commenting on um, the uh, the picture on the label. Uh, you know, we kind of you know thought you know this looks very much like the one on the Virgin label, doesn't it? And, uh, but I didn't know that um, Caroline Records were a an offshoot of Virgin Records. Uh, it was actually uh, Derek Derek Higgins pointed that out to me on um, Facebook. So um, there we go. So um, one unusual kind of aspect uh, of this record is um, uh, it says here side one forty five and side two thirty three. So on both of the, um, the discs, the um, yeah, they're on different times. Uh, and I love this as well. Um, I mean, a lot of people. Are kind of split between you know Cabaret Voltaire's early kind of more uh, experimental period and their latter slightly more um, I suppose slightly more commercial um, stuff. But I, I you know I I can appreciate both both um, aspects of their um, of the cabbies. So um, there we go. Thanks very much. Uh, for that, Ben. Uh, now, uh, steam with. <coughs> excuse me. Steam with the cabbies.
guys. Um, I picked up um, three of their early singles online. Uh, I've been looking to um, looking for these for quite a while. Um, now, this is um, Extended Play, their debut EP on uh, Love Trade. Uh, it has Do the Mussolini, Head Kick, uh, Here She Comes Now, which is a cover of a um, of a Velvet Underground track. Um, this is um, you know, an extremely influential record in the kind of um, you know post-punk industrial uh, movement, uh, and influenced quite a lot of um, a lot of other acts down the line. Uh, cool. Now, I have two other um, early 7 inches by um, the Cabbies as well, which I picked up online. This is uh, Nag Nag Nag, also on Rough Trade. Uh, this is another seminal um, recording from them. Uh, the B-side has a track called um, Is That Me Finding Someone At The Door Again, which is a very early recording circa 1975 and it's actually yeah it's a live recording uh, so there you go um, this is another early seven inch front cabbies uh, silent command also on rough trade uh, picked up this online as well uh, this is from 79 again this is a very kind of, um, again, kind of very, kind of evocative of what was going on, you know, kind of how music was developing at this uh, period, um, uh, you know, the kind of post-punk kind of experimental kind of, uh, you know, there was a lot of interesting stuff going on at the time, uh, and the cabbies were kind of, they were at the forefront of it. Um, I picked up some more seven inch singles from this period, um, starting off with um, also Rough Trade. Uh, this is by Swell Maps. Uh, Swell Maps were a group from Birmingham, and uh, they were extremely influential. Uh, you know, kind of like the cabbies in their own way. Um, uh, this is um, Let's Build a Car. Um, comes in this kind of a unusual kind of fold out sleeve. There you go. And uh, I think the image, kind of an unusual image on the front, it looks like a, um, I think it might be a Zero fighter, you know, the Zero fighters, Japanese fighter planes from World War II, at least I think that's what it looks like to me. I may be wrong. Um, now, uh, another extremely seminal group from this period. Uh, Joy Division. They need no introduction. Uh, this is a transmission on um, the factory label. Uh, comes in this um, kind of, uh, kind of rough um, surface sleeve, textured sleeve. Okay, kind of similar to the one that um, uh, the early pressings of Unknown Pleasures came out in. And uh, another 7 inch um, by them, uh, Love Will Tear Us Apart. Uh, I picked up all three of these, by the way, uh, in a um, record shop in town here. Uh, ben, you know the one I'm talking about. Um, so, 
Yeah, nice, uh, nice, nice spines there. And now, moving on. I sleeve. Uh, I'll show you it there if I can fit it all in. Uh, now it is a compilation album. Um, it was originally released in the early 70s. I'm not exactly sure which exact pressing this one is. I think it might be a more recent reissue. Uh, okay, but it's it's got um, most of the classics on there. Uh, Waiting for the man. Candy says. Ultimate parties. Uh, it's a double album, by the way. Um, uh, Sister Ray. Beginning to see the light. So um, yeah, that's quite a. It's quite an interesting pickup there. Uh, by the way, that kind of a crash you heard there. Uh, uh, these fell onto the ground. There's no damage done. They seem definitely. Sorry about that pen. Uh, put them down somewhere safe. Okay, uh, moving on. which I picked up at the Mother Jones um, flea market, uh, which is a place I go to quite a lot to pick up vinyl. Um, this is um, Bob Dylan bringing it all back home on CBS. Uh, the sleeve, as you can see, is split, but um, I mean, that's something you can, all you need is a bit of glue, you know, kind of paper based glue. To um, sort that out, um, I don't think this is the first pressing. It definitely wouldn't be. Don't think it's an original. Uh, it does have the old um, orange CBS label, but uh, probably uh, pressing from the late sixties or early seventies. Uh, now. On the same day that I picked that up, I also uh, scored this. Uh, this is Decade by um, Neil Young, a compilation album, triple, triple album, which he released in '77, and it was uh, detailing what at the time was 10 years of his career, uh, starting with Buffalo Springfield. Um, his stuff with um, Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young and um, his own solo stuff. So um, uh, all three, um, all three discs seem to be in quite very good, really nice condition. Um, the sleeve itself looks like it is kind of stored. There is a bit, it's kind of a bit of damp on it, but. Um, uh, it's not too bad otherwise. Um, there you go, it's got some um, okay, sleeve notes um, uh, by uh, Neil Young himself on all the, um, all the tracks. Uh, so, as I said, a triple album. Um, it's on the reprise label. And uh, we go. Some classics there. Yeah. Uh, yeah, 
so uh, I've listened to two of the discs so far, and uh, they, yeah, they, they sounds really good. Uh, another score which I picked up at Mother Jones as well. This monster, another triple album. Uh, this one I haven't actually gotten to listen to yet, but uh, I am really looking forward to it. This is um, Led Zeppelin Remasters. Uh, this is a compilation from 1990, uh, and as, as it says on the tin, it's a remaster of um, a lot of their um, best known tracks. Um, Again, um, uh, the sleeve is in nice enough condition. There's a bit of a split here, but um, uh, the discs themselves are fine. Uh, they, I haven't played it yet, but um, uh, uh, they all look, they all look um, perfectly okay. They, I can't see any major scratches or anything on them, so uh, there we go. Uh, that is the zip. Okay. Okay, let's be careful, no more of accidents. This this is um, uh, Sparks, one of the more interesting kind of quirky bands of the 70s. Uh, a lot of you might be familiar with them. They had a couple of big hits in the 70s and early 80s. Um, this town ain't big enough for the both of us. Uh, it's probably their best known tune. Uh, Ron and um, Ron and Russell Mail, two brothers. Um, this guy, I'm Ron, is it Ron or Ron or Russell? I'm not, I can't get it mixed up, but uh, he's the guy with the um, the Hitler moustache and the kind of weird stare. Um, if you've ever seen clips of them on YouTube, uh, so this uh, this is this album is called Indiscreet, and uh, it's from 1975, and it's on the um, the Island label. Um, now. Um, another interesting score that I picked up was um, The Associates. Uh, this is an album called Sulk from 1982. And uh, The Associates were kind of, uh, they were, you know, they were sort of um, part of the kind of um, new romantic scene, I suppose. Uh, but they were kind of Musically, they were kind of a bit more out there, I guess, than most of those bands. Um, they had a few hit singles in 1982, and then they, then they split up. Um, uh, this is a German um, pressing of, um, of Sulk. Uh, this, uh, that was the album which came out that same year, in 82. Okay. Now, oh, I, my next one I probably should have showed this to you after I show you the Cabaret Voltaire singles because it kind of ties in more uh, with those, I guess. But um, this is by a band who I've kind of only kind of really been starting to get into recently. Uh, now this is by Throbbing Russell. Uh, second annual report, and now this is not a re this is not a first pressing because um, first pressings of this are they are astronomical uh, price wise. So this is a reissue from 1983 on mute. Uh, now this they're not for everybody. Um, Drumming whistle. They're you know, they're not. They're. Um, not the most um, accessible of um, musical acts. Uh, quite controversial, controversial subject matter. 
musically, um, you know, they're, they're, they're challenging, I suppose you could say. Um, I picked up this at the um, um, same record fair where I, um, um, where I scored um, the um, Velvet Underground album. So, um, yeah, so this is, um, uh, it's, it's something a bit um, different, I suppose, to um, what I normally show you. But, um, yeah, interesting. Um, now, uh, this now is um, something uh, that um, from a band that uh, you know, extremely familiar to many of you, uh, Thin Lizzy, uh, one of the greatest Irish bands of the seventies. Uh, well. It's not like they had a lot of competition really, I mean, there wasn't a whole lot of um, kind of Irish rock bands, you know, it was kind of dominated by the show bands, um, less said about them the better, but uh, this is their third album, um, Vagabonds of the Western World, uh, this is an original uh, UK pressing on Decca, now, um, I picked this up for eight euros, and um, uh, it turns out this this is quite rare. Uh, this is um, it's quite hard to come across. Um, now uh, it it does have a big scratch. Um, I don't know if you can see it. But probably can't, but um, uh, you know, condition wise, it could probably be described as probably good good plus. But um, it is very, um, it is quite sought after, and uh, it does come with um, uh, the insert as well, which um, uh, some 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 copies apparently came with the insert, others didn't. But, uh, this has um, the lyric insert included, and uh, it's in perfect condition. So um, yes, yeah, so this is an interesting score. Um, I have seen a copy of this, um, not the same, same pressing for sale uh, for eighty five euros. So yeah, and it's got a fantastic um, sleeve as well by um, Jim Fitzpatrick. He did quite a few um, um, Tim Lizzy album covers. He did. Um, his most famous one was uh, Jailbreak. So, um, my last um, record that I'm going to show you, I also picked this up at Mother Jones. Uh, now this is an interesting find. Uh, a bit of 1990s vinyl for you. Uh, now this is my Tinder Sticks. A band who um, I used to like a lot when I was younger. I kind of, I kind of uh, seen this um, when I saw this. I don't, know, you know, kind of brought back memories of um, the nineteen nineties when I used to listen to them quite a lot. And um, so this is um, this is their debut album, a self-titled debut. Um, it's a double album. A full sleeve. Now the sleeve itself, it's one of those kind of awkward sleeves where it's very difficult to take the, the record out without kind of, you know, uh, it, it gets damaged easily. I think it's one of those kind of sleeves. But um, a double album. The, the vinyl itself looks like it hasn't been played at all. It looks virtually in mint condition. Uh, like there's, there's not a single scratch or or mark on the vinyl. It just looks um, it looks perfect. So uh, I haven't played it yet. Um, so uh, yeah, that's um, yeah. I'm quite pleased with this. Um, I picked it up for a nice enough price as well. I think uh, I looked up the uh, on Discogs. It's it's 
and it goes for you know quite a lot. Um, I think originally um, uh, original releases had a, um, a collection of postcards, postcard inserts, but this one doesn't have them. But uh, I think even without the postcards, it's, it's still um, it's still quite sought after. It goes for quite a lot. So um, so I'm quite pleased with uh, with this find. So uh, so that's this. Uh, oops. Uh, another accident averted. Um, so until next time, uh, thank you very much for tuning in and um, have a happy Christmas uh, to everybody and um, see you next time.